Vitamin K2 is a very popular supplement that many people use for fighting plaque buildup in the arteries. Is there any evidence for this and what's the correct dose? In this video I'm going to answer these questions and I'll also share the foods you should be eating to get vitamin K2. As a bonus I'll also talk about vitamin K1. So make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Vitamin K2 also called menaquinone is an essential vitamin needed for blood coagulation and bone density. Vitamin K2 has anti-coagulation, anti-inflammatory and anti atherosclerosis erotic properties. High dietary K1 and K2 intake is associated with reduced coronary calcification and all-cause mortality. You get K2 from primarily fermented foods and cheeses and in smaller amounts from liver. You get K1 from leafy green vegetables and other plant foods. So there is evidence that eating K1 and K2 foods is good for your longevity. What about supplements? There are over 15 different types of vitamin K2. MK4 and MK7 are the most common types. Out of MK4 and MK7, MK7 is the one that's more bioavailable and with a longer half-life. When MK4 has a half-life of only a few hours, then MK7 has 48 hours, which makes it effective at smaller dosages and at less frequent intake. Let's talk about the benefits of supplementation starting with MK7. There is evidence that vitamin K2 MK7 supplements can slow down and even reduce coronary artery calcification. In a 2022 randomized controlled trial, they found that 720 micrograms a day of vitamin K2 MK7 plus 25 micrograms of vitamin D for two years resulted in regression of coronary artery calcification by 51 agatstone units and by 92 agatstone units in those with a coronary calcium score of over 400. A 2023 meta-analysis of 14 randomized controlled trials concluded that vitamin K supplements could slow down coronary artery calcification. The studies used about 100 to 2000 micrograms of vitamin K2 MK7. So several clinical trials have shown that vitamin K2 supplementation, especially MK7, could slow down the progression of coronary artery calcification. The effects aren't massive, but any decrease in calcium buildup does reduce the risk of future cardiac events. And the effects are much bigger in people with a higher calcium score. Based on the 2023 meta-analysis, a dose of 100 to 2000 micrograms a day is effective. But that's quite a wide range. So which one is it? A 2015 trial on healthy postmenopausal women found that 180 micrograms a day improved arterial stiffness, but they didn't measure calcium. In the 2022 clinical trial, they used a dose of 720 micrograms a day, which I would suggest is the better dose. So it appears that a higher dose of a few hundred micrograms a day is more effective than 100 micrograms a day. Regarding bone density, a 2015 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that MK4 supplementation at a dose of 1.5 milligrams a day improved bone mineral density in postmenopausal women with osteoporosis, but not in postmenopausal women without osteoporosis. In another 2021 clinical trial on postmenopausal women, three years of supplementing with 375 micrograms of K2 MK7 with calcium and vitamin D didn't improve bone density or turnover either. However, a 2022 meta-analysis of clinical trials on postmenopausal women found that vitamin K2 supplementation could modestly increase bone density. So the evidence that vitamin K2 supplementation would improve bone density is somewhat limited and it's found to be effective primarily in postmenopausal women who have osteoporosis. Although vitamin K2 supplements do work in some aspects, the intake of dietary K2 is associated with longevity and reduced risk of heart disease quite consistently. So how do you get your vitamin K2 from foods? Here's a table of the highest vitamin K2 foods. Number one is natto, which is a fermented soybean dish. It contains over a thousand micrograms of vitamin K2 MK7 in 100 grams. Number two is goose liver pate, 369 micrograms of MK4, hard cheeses, 76 micrograms, camembert cheese, 68 micrograms, eel, 63 micrograms, soft cheeses, 56.5 micrograms, 4% percent milk 38 micrograms egg yolk 32 micrograms curd cheeses 24.8 micrograms cheddar cheeses 23.5 micrograms butter 15 micrograms chicken liver 12.6 micrograms and ground beef 8.1 micrograms regarding mk4 and mk7 then fermented foods are the highest source of mk7 and other mks like mk9 whereas foods like egg yolks liver and beef contain mostly mk4 that's why natto is the highest food source of MK7 and K2 in the world. Natto is a fermented soybean dish. Dietary natto intake has been seen to contribute to reductions in cardiovascular disease mortality. A 2020 study on over 92,000 Japanese adults aged 45 to 74 followed up for 14.8 years found that a higher intake of fermented soy products such as miso and natto was linked to a lower risk of all-cause mortality, whereas the same wasn't found with regular soy products. Both natto and miso are fermented dishes. You can get 1,000 micrograms 
grams of vitamin K2 MK7 from just 100 grams of netto. That's a very large and effective dose. And theoretically, you wouldn't need to supplement with vitamin K2 if you're eating such large amounts of netto. Let's talk about vitamin K1 now, because it's also quite interesting in regards to calcification. A recent 2022 randomized controlled trial on people with diabetes found that 10 milligrams of vitamin K1 per day decreased the likelihood of developing new lesions in the coronary arteries, aorta, and both aortic and coronary arteries. Another 2022 clinical trial on hemodialysis patients found that people taking 5 milligrams of vitamin K1 for 18 months had a 68% lower progression of thoracic aortic calcification. Regarding inflammation, then this 2018 double-blind placebo-controlled trial found that 10 milligrams of vitamin K1 for 8 weeks in patients of rheumatoid arthritis didn't lower inflammation or disease severity. Dietary vitamin K1 intake, however, is linked to a lower risk of all-cause mortality, heart disease, hip fractures, and diabetes. A 2019 review concluded that K1 supplementation does reduce the risk of fractures, but the studies are considered low quality. So getting your K1 from dietary sources appears to be quite beneficial. And the evidence for K1 supplements are somewhat smaller, aside from the benefits on coronary artery calcification. You get K1 from leafy greens like spinach, kale, mustard greens, Swiss chard, etc. You also get it from natto, broccoli, and in smaller amounts from liver and cheeses. Here's a table of the highest K1 foods. Collard greens, 706 micrograms per 100 grams. Turnip, 586. Broccoli, 146 micrograms. Spinach, 96 micrograms. Natto, 32 micrograms. Kiwi, 34 to 50 micrograms. Avocado, 15 to 27 micrograms. Cheeses, 2 to 6 micrograms. Beef liver, 2.3 micrograms. And minced meat, 1 microgram. I also want to talk about the dosage of vitamin K from dietary sources. In a 2021 study on Danish people, an intake of 280 micrograms a day of vitamin K1 and 60 to 80 micrograms a day of vitamin K2 was associated with a maximal reduction in the risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. The recommended daily allowance or RDA for vitamin K, on the other hand, is only 90 micrograms a day for females and 120 micrograms a day for males. There isn't a separate RDA for vitamin K1 and K2. They have the same RDA, so the the guidelines don't differentiate between K1 and K2, but there is a huge difference between these vitamins. What's more, the RDA is greatly undershooting because the optimal intake for vitamin K1 is 280 micrograms a day and over 100 micrograms for K2. So you want to consume more than the RDA when it comes to vitamin K1 and K2. Overall, I think it's a good idea to increase your dietary intake of vitamin K1 and K2. It appears to reduce the risk of coronary artery calcification and all-cause mortality. If you want to learn more about the different supplements and dietary practices linked to longevity, then check out my new book, The Longevity Leap. Link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.